Welcome to Testar's Nerf Room. What's something that you've dreamed about for a really long time? Maybe you've dreamed about getting a horse, or maybe you've dreamed about getting a Lamborghini, or maybe you've dreamed about Nerf selling a professional strife for a retail price that you could just get off store shelf. You're not dreaming anymore. I, I want to show you guys a magic trick that Nerf, th they, they did this themselves. Lipo. Magazine. Trigger. That alone is a pretty compelling argument. This is the Strife X. So this is a blaster that's kind of been a big deal since Nerf first unveiled it, and even before Nerf unveiled it, people kind of tried to figure out that this thing existed because there were leaks on Instagram posts showing modified Nerf strifes that Nerf themselves posted, and that kind of gained a lot of attention, and then a little while later, this thing came out, and I lost my mind when I first saw it. It was basically like having a panic attack, except it wasn't out of fear, it was out of excitement. And, uh, yeah, this thing is bringing a lot of new things to the table, and Nerf themselves are selling it. This is a stock product. I want to reiterate that. Nerf is selling this, and it is a stock product product. I haven't modified this in any way. I opened the box and this is what I got. With all that said, let's start with the design. So if you've seen an original Strife, this looks very, very similar, but there are subtle differences which I will point out in a moment. But just looking at the design altogether with the battery on it, I'm, I'm gonna be honest here, this is one of the most badass looking products Nerf has released. It looks terrifying. It looks like a modified Strife. I can't stress that enough. The blaster looks like it has already been modified by someone, and you can just buy it off the shelf. They even did custom mods to it that look like the original Strife mods, like the big extended battery door and the extended flywheel cage. I love details like that. Even though it makes the blaster super ridiculously wide only on the right side, and it's still completely flat on the left side, it matches what most Strife mods look like anyway, and so I honestly don't see that as an issue. I still think this blaster looks freaking slamming. And while they didn't paint Nerf Pro or Strife X on the other side, at the very least, they put this big black stripe thing on both sides, so I can give them a little bit of credit for that. But still though, Hasbro, you could have at least put Nerf Pro on there, even if you don't put Strife X, because I know it's on this thing. But Nerf Pro is just on the shell. They could have put it right here. It's a big empty space. They really, really easily could have put it there, but it's Hasbro. Squeeze every penny. But for all intents and purposes, I think this blaster looks good. It doesn't have a barrel lug, and that was an immediate turnoff for Phase 1 Foam, and I believe that was the first turnoff for Phase 1 Foam, because he honestly really doesn't like this thing from everything that I've heard. But yes, it is true. There's no end strike barrel lug on here, but what also confuses me is the fact that they still have rails, but they're rival rails. Not Picatinny or Elite, Elite compatible. Rival style, which only had like four attachments made for them. So that begs the question, why rival style? What was the benefit of doing that? I genuinely don't understand why they chose rival style and they didn't just stick with the original elite style or go to a Picatinny style like other big blaster companies have done. Like Dart Zone, the Max Dictator has a Picatinny style on the top. The Zuru Longshot has a big Picatinny rail on the top for you to put Picatinny attachments. This one doesn't use Picatinny. They instead use a rival style. It looks like Picatinny from a distance, but it isn't. I, I don't know why they did that. That's just really confusing. I'm not really complaining about it, but it is very confusing. What about the ergonomics? This blaster includes a main grip and kind of a foregrip when you put the magazine in, but because it's a Strife, there's no designated foregrip. Now, the grip that it has is identical to the Strife's, with one extended detail being the bottom of the grip, basically having an extended Strife grip thing on there that you could get from Out of Darts or something pre-molded in, and that makes this grip absolute perfection. It is about as good as you can possibly get. It is a nice big grip, it feels wonderful, there's no weird hole right here that digs into the palm of your hand, no. The grip feels solid, sturdy, and well done. That's another thing I really want to quickly address. This thing is built like a brick. 
it is solid. The plastic is very thick, like end strike style thick. It is, there is no cheaping out on the plastic quality of this blaster. And I praise Hasbro to the highest caliber for doing that because if any blaster shouldn't be cheaped out on, it's this one. And you heard me right, half length darts, like that. The foregrip, if you hold onto the magazine like this, works very well, especially if you put a stock on it. And with this stock on it specifically, it's, it's really good. This is a compelling package right here. It's how it's meant to be. It's really comfortable like this. But with all that said, I'm kind of rambling now. How does this blaster work? Because this is where the review gets interesting. This is a flywheel semi-automatic blaster, as you can tell, that takes short darts. You put the mag in right here, like on an original Strife with an original short dart mag, well, like up at the front, still copying pre-made mods here. You rev and you fire. And, um, yeah. It sounds absolutely terrifying. It's loud and violent and it revs up super fast, way faster than any stock Nerf flywheeler. It's like you're revving and it's already revved up. It is basically the equivalent of the Nerf rival Percy's rev up time, except it's even louder and even scarier. I can't stress this enough, it, it sounds terrifying. Let's talk about the triggers. You've got a rev trigger, a main trigger, and a mag release up here, which I will get into that in a moment. The rev trigger isn't as good as the original Strife's. I don't think you can really top the original Strife's rev trigger because it just goes and it clicks right in and it's very satisfying and clicky. This one is the same shape, but it has a worse micro switch in it. I wish they'd kept the original Strife's micro switch, if anything, but it does work and it is still rather clicky. As for the main trigger, it feels noticeably different than the Strife. Not much worse. I would say the original Strife trigger is a little bit better, but this blaster uses a completely different mechanism being a geared pusher which means that the trigger pull is super, super snappy when you actually are firing the blaster. It's kind of rough when you're just doing this with it and you can hear it, but believe me, this is one of the snappiest triggers you're going to find on any semi-automatic blaster, trust me. And now for the mag release. It is a nice paddle style mag release with a very satisfying pull, look at that. That is so nice. And if you put a magazine into it, it is very easy to just reach up, grab it with your thumb and pull it right down. But I'm gonna have a hot take and say the original Stripes mag release is actually better because I'm used to doing this and pulling it down, especially when my hand is already here. Because on an original Strife, to pull the magazine out, you would just extend your middle finger forward and pull down and the mag would come with it. This one, if you're holding it like this, you have to take your hand off the magazine, put it back on the magazine, and then pull it down. And it's an extra step that I'm just not used to doing, and every single time I have ever tried to redo this blaster, I end up pushing my middle finger forward and being like, where's the mag release? Oh, there it is and it gets kind of frustrating. You do get used to it after a while, but it is still worth noting, definitely. Now, uh, <laughs> I gotta talk about this battery because this might actually be the greatest thing that Nerf has ever come up with in the history of the universe. Let me explain why. So here we have our beloved Tesseract. Let's say you want to take the battery out, put the battery in, or change the battery for another one. Here's what you gotta do. First, you gotta find a screwdriver. Then you gotta get it in the screw and unscrew it. Then you have to take the battery tray off. Then we've got an XT60 connector. Then you gotta plug the battery in and figure out how to make it fit because it doesn't wanna fit. So you have to like shove this off to the side, get the battery in like this, get it in an angle. Yeah, I know the battery tray is a freaking mess because I wasn't really expecting this to happen. Then once you finally finagle it in, if you wanna use a LiPo alarm, <laughs> good luck with that. And then you gotta figure out how to get this back in and push it down before the wires can expand and, and get stuck in the way. So you have to keep them like shoved in the way while actively trying to screw this back in with the other hand. Most of the time, it is an up to a 10 minute ordeal that is a titanic pain in the ass to deal with, and it is like one of the one, th one of the few things that I really don't like about this blaster. What about the Strife X? I mean, look at this battery tour and look at this battery. How is it possibly gonna fit? I mean, I don't know. Done. You wanna take it out? Okay, you do this. Done. It's perfect in every way. This could not be any better in any 
possible, reasonable stretch of the imagination. This is the greatest mechanism I've ever seen to changing a battery. And it's not even the first time I've seen it. I remember when the Percy's came out and this exact same setup was heavily praised for how effortless the battery was to work with. Taking the battery out and putting the battery in was no more complicated than changing a magazine on a stripe. It was beautiful and everyone immediately fell in love with that mechanic out of this blaster and I remember a big chunk of the Nerf community was actually depressed when they didn't do this again with any more blasters in the future. <laughs> well, it's back in the best possible blaster they could have put that mechanic into. Same setup, but facing the other direction. So it is honestly better if you take your main hand off of this and twist it while pulling it with your thumb. It's a little bit more fiddly than the Percy's, but still, remember what I said about the Tesseract and how hard it is to change the battery. And that's honestly a rather easy battery to take out and put in when it comes to heavily modified blasters. This literally makes dealing with the LiPo the easiest you could possibly deal with it. And the LiPo itself is even better! I remember when I made a video talking about I screwed up so I'm taking a break, where essentially I said something that I wasn't meant to say about LiPos, where I felt like they're too dangerous for the main media. Because if you don't use them right, you have a risk of burning down your house or blowing yourself up in the process. This is everything that I wanted a LiPo to be. It is represented perfectly. The safety, the safety control things are inside of this LiPo. And what I mean by that is there's a circuit board that limits how much power can be put in or taken out of this LiPo, so you are not at risk of overcharging it or discharging it to the point where it will break or you will just not be able to use it anymore. And even better, it's all built in so you can charge it with a USB-C. You don't have to worry about the expensive charger, you don't have to worry about any of that. You grab a USB-C, you plug it in, you plug it near your wall, this light turns red, and when the light turns off, the battery's ready to go. It is literally the simplest thing you could possibly have. And it was made by Hasbro, not even by a third-party company. If Nerf can do it, anyone can. And I think that this is a very, very important very exciting milestone to reach because if this type of battery becomes mainstream in high performance blasters like this everyone will be able to use a high performance blaster like this and no one will be at risk of blowing themselves up thank you so much hasbro you have no idea how important this is <laughs> So, um, yeah, if that wasn't enough, you can do that with it too. So the Nerf Pro Strife X, this is a $120 product. It's not cheap. It is pretty high end for Nerf. This is one of the most expensive blasters they've come out with. But honestly, it is revolutionary in a lot of ways. Not only is this the first Nerf blaster that actually exceeds 100 or so FPS that they've put out themselves, but it comes with a revolutionary LiPo that really should be included in any high-end Nerf blaster like this that you can buy. It comes with short darts, which is the first time they've ever done short darts, and it's their own style of short darts, which mimics the AccuStrike style. Honestly, these short darts are pretty good. I've been testing these all day long, and they're pretty nice. It comes with a brand new short dart magazine that is pretty similar to Talon's with a couple changes, and I will be reviewing these magazines separately in a different video. And the blaster itself is just so cool. Except there's a humongous glaring issue that I have yet to bring up that is probably going to turn about half of you off. So you know how the Strife is like really easy to mod and it's really well done and everything just kind of works? Yeah, they changed literally every single internal component in this entire blaster. Every single thing in here is different, which means... None of your Strife kits will work. No cosmetic kits, no internal kits, no flywheel cages, no pusher upgrades, no circuit boards, nothing. The entire wiring setup and internal setup of this blaster is nothing like the Strife. Which essentially means all of your modding knowledge about the Strife 
will not work with this. You have to start completely over as if it were a completely different blaster. Why is this a big deal? It is literally calling itself a strife. The idea that it is not a strife when it is called a strife is a ridiculous concept. It is a stupid concept and a ridiculous concept and it really shouldn't have the ability to happen, but it does. And here it is. The Strife X is not a Strife. This is a completely different product. And that is just... Why? Why did you do that, Hasbro? It would have been literally so much easier to not call this a Strife and just call it, like, something else. Like, something maybe similar to the Strife, but it is called the Strife X. And yet it isn't a Strife. It's something different. That doesn't make the internals of this blaster bad by any means. It's still a semi-automatic blaster that has really good motors and works incredibly well. It just means that you can't use strife kits in this. So what's the point of calling it a strife if you can't treat it like a strife? If you're using it like a stock strife and you don't care about putting barrel attachments and stuff on it, then okay, it works as a strife. But if you plan on modding this thing like a strife in any capacity at all, you're screwed. You may as well just get an original Strife, which confuses me as to why they did that, because, like, I don't think it would have been that hard to just keep the internals the same as the Strife, because, well, people have been doing this style of internals with the original Strife for over 10 years. It came out in 2013, and people were quick to mod it. It is now close to 2024, and only now is Nerf doing those first 2013 mods with this. So, um... Yeah, that's kind of an issue. And actually, if you were to do the exact same parts that are in here with a regular pusher instead of a geared pusher, it would probably be cheaper than to buy this blaster straight from Hasbro. So that cool that begs the question, what are the benefits here? Simple. This battery, in my opinion, is worth picking up the blaster all by itself. A LiPo battery that is this safe and well-engineered that you can just put it in and start shooting with it, not have to worry about it at all, is a very, very, very big deal because that allows tons upon tons more people to use the Strife X and be able to enjoy the Strife X's high performance without having to worry about the battery. Sure, the Omnia does the same thing, but this is made by Hasbro. This is a big deal out of Hasbro. And honestly, they did this LiPo better than the Omnia did because the Omnia used to have to deal with screws. This one literally snaps onto the side of the blaster shell and can be detached in less than a second. You could literally switch this battery out for a new one in actual seconds. Few seconds, like one, two, three. Three seconds if there was another battery in my pocket to switch that out. I mean, I have to fiddle with my pocket a little bit, but you get the point. This blaster, Strife or not, is an amazing product, and I am so happy that Hasbro finally made it. Yes, they're behind. Yes, it's not up to date with current generation mods. And yes, it does cost $120 for something that you could reasonably build for about a hundred bucks. But genuinely, I can't find much to complain when it comes to the Strife X. This is one of the coolest blasters I think Nerf has ever made, and I seriously recommend you pick one up if you want to just have a strife that works and you aren't really you aren't really uh, confident enough to trust yourself with lipos, which I understand because lipos are kind of terrifying. Take a lot of reading to understand how they work and a lot of knowledge on how they work and how to use them safely, and even then, you can still screw up because human error is a real thing. This thing is deliberately designed to prevent you from being able to screw up, and I think that is worth the purchase. So if you want to get this blaster, I'll link it in the description below. Thanks for watching. Bye.